It's about 12 o'clock Eastern time right now, ladies and gents. I want to thank everybody for sticking around today. Boy, what a great mon uh, Monday. Boy, it felt like a Monday, didn't it? Welcome back Tuesday. Hope everyone out there had a great Martin Luther King holiday, first day back here after a long weekend, and we're going over our trades together today here in the trade room. Now, we did a fantastic job this morning early at really nailing down our plan of attack. We began our day this morning. Let's go right to the Euro because the Euro was where we really began our plan this morning. We began our plan this morning above the previous day's range, if you recall. Now, what does above the previous day's range tell me? It tells me we're an outside day. Specifically, though, I want to buy pullbacks. And we got a fantastic opportunity here to buy a pullback. I didn't take it, but if you were watching the Euro at 7.15 this morning, you had a crisp, clean wave long. Now, remember, a wave pattern should go all the way up and test that 2820. What did it do? It failed, didn't it? And when it failed, what is that considered? And by the way, here's a wave short sitting up right now. Final target will be, guys, down here at 2720. Uh, so 2720 will be your final target on the euro. All right. Now, I would probably wait to get below the 2740. So you go, you know, say 35s or so. I would just go below 38s. Okay, below 38s, all right, down to the 27.20. Be a wave pattern short. Back to my plan, though, here. We saw the first thing this morning was, was to take a wave long. Well, when that wave pattern long failed, that was the first clue we got. Now, how do I know it failed? Because it made lower highs. And how do I know what a wave pattern is supposed to do? Because we do this every day the same way over and over again. So the first thing we see is we're an outside day. We're above Monday's trading range. And since we're above the trading range, we expect price to keep rising. When it doesn't, we immediately think to ourselves, something's up. Are these buyers failing? Maybe the Chinese GDP, maybe the higher than expected uh, German zoo report this morning that made this thing jump like this, maybe they're going to fail now after that news came out. Maybe it just pumped it up after the news at 3 o'clock this morning, and now it's going to fail now. So we immediately find our trigger zone. Our trigger zone here, as you can see, well, actually, that's not it right there. It was this one right here. Let's get rid of this one here. I'll go F8 and go low to high. We immediately come out and see that we have a trigger zone all the way down here. So here comes our trigger zone. And our trigger zone now becomes our target. Right? That's where now we expect price to go down to. And it just so happens to be we've got the open below us. We've got the previous high of day below us. At this point, the wave pattern fails. We know the news was responsible for propping the price up, and we want to sell. Now, how do we do it? Do I just jump into the trade short? Do I just hit the sell button? No, I don't. I look for a pattern. In comes my faster time frame. Now, this trade is referenced my second trade of the day today, right, at 8.55. Okay, this was one of our biggest trades today, and it comes off our fastest time frame. Now, what happened at 8.30, guys? What did we have at 8.30? We had Empire State Manufacturing Survey, didn't we? And what happened at 8.30? It came out what should have been bullish. Okay, we saw surprisingly high manufacturing data, which in my humble opinion means more people going back to work. It means more demand on crude. Okay? It means the economy should be cooking higher, right? getting better, improving, sentiment. So in this case, we do expect to see the euro drop if the dollar starts to rise. Okay? But what did the dollar do? The dollar went in the exact opposite direction at 8.30, didn't it? It went lower. Here's my dollar. It later began to rise, but the reaction to the news was initially negative, right? And it was like, okay, well, what's going on here? In other words, we didn't get the typical reaction to the news we wanted. So what we did was we looked to get short. We already knew we had the open down bottom here. We already knew we had the targets that were bringing us down. 8.55 comes around. There's my 8.30. Two-step pattern short. Really nothing more, right, nothing easier than the two-step short, the wave pattern short, 
right, to jump into this trade short here. So, of course, my specific entry on this trade here, right, 27.47 is right here. As you can see, we made some pretty good profit out of it. I'll be honest, I was expecting to go much lower than this. Okay, because when we made it below that 27.40, I was expecting this thing to tumble, and it never did. Okay, so personality quickly slowed down, but hey, got some pretty good cash out of it first trade of the day. And if you recall, what I talked about this morning was, was that I'm first of the morning, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pad my account, I'm going to take my money and run. We made 20 ticks, 250 bucks because we're 12 per tick. Now, the crude actually the same thing, but crude oil did not nearly give us as much as we got out of that, at least not for the first trade. Now, crude oil was a much easier market to read after the news. So 8.30 news comes out, right? There's my 8.30 news. Now, that news was crude, bullish, okay? Or at least it should have been. Why would more manufacturing, right? Why would triple the jobs? Why would that result in crude falling? Who knows? I don't care. I don't want to know why, okay? I'm not Goldman Sachs. I don't have a team of analysts. I don't have that. So all I can do as a day trader is react. What happens is now we go through 835, which is right there, and crude is falling. And again, what should happen didn't happen. The reaction to the news now, now I've got my dollar now rising. Now my dollar cooking with gas now. Now here we are. Now we're starting to really cook now on the dollar moving higher. That dollar correlation confirms to go short on crude. We also know again. We're getting lower highs on crude here. We could smell it, couldn't we? It was a situation this morning where we could almost smell those sellers getting ready to take a big bite out of those buyers. And so what do we do? It was two steps short, into wave pattern short, into wave pattern short, into a failed wave pattern short. The opens the magnet. We get below the previous day's range. And again, this happened, this happened in real time. We talked about this earlier this morning. At the same time, we knew all we had to do was those buyers start failing, lower lows, lower highs. We took the pattern to make some money on it. So on the way down here, you can see we did whatever we could to get short here. Okay, The first trade I took didn't go anywhere. It went a plus five, minus five for a scratch. Second trade I took this morning, another you know, plus five, plus ten, minus six. Made us some cash, didn't, right, did not give us that big drop we were waiting for. Again, another try. You can see it was sloppy here until 9.15. Right? It wasn't until after 9.30 that we really get a chance right, to get some money going on this crude. We had the right idea. We did a great job at knowing where price wanted to go, but this is a great example of how I am really happy. I took my own advice and took my profit when I needed to on the euro because it was able to keep me emotionally in the game. Okay, there's nothing worse than you know, filling with your targets, missing out on that easy target, not following your plan, and then taking a loss in the next trade and just wishing you could go back in time and just follow your plan again. So follow the plan. And if you recall, my exact words were at that time, I do not have the luxury yet to be trading aggressively. I will take my profit and run right here. Thank you very much, Euro. Thank you very much, Crude. I'll wait for the high percentage trades later on in the morning. Well, boy, did we get a run for our money. Because between 9.30 and 10 o'clock, it got really sloppy. I did a great job at demonstrating on the Russell today what not to do, didn't I? On the Russell, we had this wave pattern short at 9.30. was called live in the room ahead of time. I didn't take it. As you can see, I was trading crude at the time. But I, just, I, made, a, I made an impulse trade here right at 10.15, 10.20. Got into a, a wave pattern short here. It was at the end of the move. It was oversold, again, impulse, and it cost me money. I later on ended up taking that same pattern again, but for the fast track, and of course, sure enough, the fast track always seems to find a way right, to make money when you take it the right way. So at 1020 in the Russell, and again, members and guests, we talked about that a couple times today. I'll take full responsibility. I should have, take, I should have drank my own Kool-Aid on that one. I, was, I made a big point of saying, let's wait for the next wave pattern in the Russell, a 13 wave, not the 8 range wave. Remember, the faster the time frame, the more whippy the patterns are. We took the 13 wave, right, about 15 minutes later, and boy, did it work out. One of the biggest trades of the day today. It was worth the wait. We waited for it. We took it. I gave you guys entry, stop, 
target. It was a great example on the Russell today because, if you recall, we literally waited all 15 of those minutes between the 10.20 and 10.35 just to get momentum and the big sellers jump in. We watched together. Together we saw momentum curl. Together we saw the speed increase. Together we watched how the trade managed out, and together we took profit on it. We also are watching how that trade now market personality slowed right down afterwards. So a fantastic example on the Russell of exactly what not to do, and I talked about it in real time when it happened, about what to wait for. If you waited for it, you made your 30 ticks. I, of course, decided to make my job more difficult this morning, I guess, and overtraded it at 1020. Then, as you can see here, back at 1039 here on crude, we're jumping right back in now. Now, if you remember, what happened at this time? Okay, we had the U.S. Open at 930. Okay, we're now back in inside the range from yesterday, inside day, which means we should be selling off here. But one thing that we saw was, boy, did that market personality stink. Okay, between 930 and 1045, this market personality got really tough. We saw it, we identified it, and we knew right away it was all going to be a little bit higher risk here. But we knew one thing for sure. And we put it on our blog, we talked about it, we had to get below 100. Because the 100 level was going to be a little bit too close to the open, and we were worried that the open and the big run over 100 would be, the, would be just bouncing around here. We also knew we wanted that dollar to move. And the dollar began to move after, after 1035, 1045. Now, we did take one at 1039. Okay, follow the plan here. So we got a wave pattern short, 1039, made some money on that. And again, you can see the reference right here. Wave short, wave short, wave short. Doesn't matter which one you took. But again, if you followed our plan and took your wave patterns below the 100, you made a great amount of cash by simply following the plan. So we went wave short on crude. I then, of course, took my wave failure. This is a great, a great example of reading tape and reading price action right at 11 o'clock this morning on crude. Now, let me show you this as an example because this is something you really want to learn. And I want to remind all the guests this morning that this indicator will come with membership. Right? We'll give you all, this, all these tools of membership. Let's go back to 11 o'clock. And let me show you. You can see it's marked up here. We, we looked at this in real time. It was a great example of, of how to avoid a loss. Now, if you recall, at, at 10 to the 7, let's find my 8 range chart. It'll be a good example of this. Here is 1057 right here. So there's 1057 right there. So at 1055, we'll say, okay, at 1055, what do we see? What direction is price moving? Price is moving higher, right, at 1055. Now, remember, I'm looking for a wave short. I'm trying to go short. Now, members, you can log into your advanced course. Watch those detailed lessons about the wave pattern. One of the most important things we talk about is speed. And this indicator, the pace of tape indicator, does that. It measures the speed. Well, you'll notice that at 10.55, what do we get? We got speed rising. And so here we are with speed rising, which in my opinion confirms who's in control. We see up in the 10th of the 8, what's happening? Speed's rising, price is rising. So that now tells me right now that this wave pattern is going to fail. And sure enough, it blows right through the 13 trigger line. We don't take the wave short. We all avoid a loss. Believe me, it would have been a fast track too. So we all can take the benefit of that and avoid that loss. So not only do I avoid losing 20 to 40 ticks, but I also now see it coming. There is, we had the luxury at that time, if you recall, of having enough room between the 13 and 21 trigger lines here. It was right here. Here was what it looked like at the time. Okay, here was that wide open space. So I get in long here, up to the 21 trigger line. That was a trade. You can see the 13 trigger here at 74, right? Right there, 74. You can see the 21 trigger line up at, up at double zeros pretty much. Double zeros. So we knew right away the speed told us to avoid that trade. We took 
the trade long instead. It was a wave failure and a perfect example of how to use speed along with your wave patterns. Members, we'll talk more about that tomorrow in training. It's a fantastic way to qualify right and wrong wave patterns. Now, then we go into a wave short. Now remember, how many times have we seen this successful? Okay, here's one of my favorite ways to trade. It's called a slingshot. We knew we didn't have the 13 wave. Okay, price came down, right? I, of course, saw the wave failure a mile away because of speed. Well, remember, there's my 21, there's my 13 now. So I'm going to buy long here for a wave failure, right? We, we pick up some good profit there. Okay, made our money there. Well, now this is supposed to be a wave short. Okay, so what do I do? I get into it short. I take that trade short. I follow my rule, right? Momentum, of course, curls a little bit, but remember it flattened back out. I was in early technically on it. Now, the price structure itself, you can see right here on the 21 range, right here, right? There's the wave short right there. So you can see the wave pattern short had, it had winner written all over it. But there were a couple things concerning us. Now, technically speaking, 100 big round number overheads a magnet. Dollar was dropping. All right? And what did we hear? We heard news out of Iraq. They're going to be pumping more oil out of the ground, producing more oil, increasing supply. And the price kept rising. So we're thinking to ourselves, okay, they're ignoring this news right now, so fade the news. Okay, remember, what should happen didn't happen, so trade the reaction that way. And then here's the next thing that happened. What else did we see? Well, I took that trade at 11 o'clock, 11.02. Did we see increasing speed going lower? No, we didn't. We didn't get the speed to confirm. So here we are now, right? Here we are now. I take the trade at 11 o'clock. I'm getting in right here. Okay, at 11.03, 11.04, what do we see happening? Speed is decreasing. No, this is a wrong time for speed to be decreasing. I'm seeing sellers in the tape with speed decreasing. This is the wrong time. Just like the speed increasing while it was retracing was the wrong time. Now, price is dropping and the speed is decreasing. Nope, not the right speed. I quickly abandon ship. Right? Man the lifeboats like you're on that ship in Tuscany. I'm joking, obviously. Hope nobody had any family on that boat. That would have scared me to death. But you can see here, not a big winner but avoided the loss, and that's the big, right, and that's the big benefit. We read the speed for the wave. We knew the wave was going to fail. We read the speed for the wave. We knew the wave was going to fail. We made 30 ticks on one wave failure and, you know, a measly four ticks, but avoided the loss on that second wave pattern. And sure enough, we were dead right about the open being the target, the 100 being the target. A little bit whippy here late in the morning, so we couldn't really overtrade it late in the morning. We did a good job at sitting on those hands right, and making that cash. As you can see, Fast Tracks made some good money today, right, 14 ticks, 30 ticks. We did have a loss here for the Fast Track. That was a high-risk Fast Track. We did a loss on it. But remember, the Fast Track, the benefit of the Fast Track is it's going to condition you to follow your rules. If this doesn't give you a reason to follow your rules, I don't know what does. It also shows you not to worry. A loss is not going to kill you. You can survive a loss and to commit to your patterns. The fast track is all about teaching those good trading habits. Once again, I want to remind everybody out there, our automated systems come membership, indicators, charts, data, lifetime memberships, all here, guys. If you have any questions, now's the time to rattle them off. Looking forward to answering all your questions right now. Let's keep it going. Let's keep it going.